Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about everyone's favorite topic, taxes. Obviously not, but most of our listeners are in the US and Canada and lots of the merchants want to go into Europe as a market, but obviously it's a complex market, a lot of different countries, different tax systems, different rules and regulations, different policies. And it can be complicated coming from the outside. And we want to dive a little bit more into e-commerce expansion into Europe and see what kind of roadblocks you might to deal with and how to fight them. With me on the show today, I have Nick Penef. He's the co-founder of Extreme Power Brands and Sakyu. He's also the partner manager at Hello Tax and a partnership advisor of more than 40 companies in the e-commerce space. And most importantly, he's fully remote since 2010. So let's welcome him to the show. Hi, Nick. How are you today? Hey, Carl, very good. As I told you, I just prepared some potatoes that are in the oven, so we're going to have a nice chat while we're waiting for that. But of course, we're not going to talk about potatoes, we're going to talk about the unsexy topic of taxes, you know, because regardless of if you want it or not, I mean, you, you cannot avoid those. Like, there is nothing certain like death and taxes, like they said in one movie, right? Yeah, very true, very true. In the past, we talked about taxes in the United States, and it's a very different system than what you can expect in Europe. Now, if you want to expand your brand and open new markets, and that might be the Netherlands, that might be Germany, that might be France, then you have to deal with all of these topics. Now, you, you're helping with that. You're in the field for a very, very long time. What is the most common questions that merchants have when they come to you and when they start basically diving into that topic with the idea of expanding into Europe. Yeah, to be honest, I mean, I used to I used to run an e-commerce business for like over over 10 years from 2010 until 2020. So I did the journey myself. It was very early. We did very well. But the, the reality is that most people or most sellers don't know. Even right now, they don't know uh, what they need. And usually when somebody comes to us at Hello Tax or Extreme Power Brand and they ask us, okay, Nick, would like to sell in Europe. Can we start tomorrow? Unfortunately, not. Uh, because, I mean, uh, like in the USA, you know, if you're selling in the States, for example, on Amazon, or, you know, it's it's pretty easy, you know, you just set up your account, Amazon is going to take care of the taxes. With Shopify or D2C, you still need to have a VAT compliance partner, but it's much, much easier, you know. In Europe, uh, to be honest, I mean, taxes are not the first thing that you should worry about. That's actually a misconception. Most people think that you need taxes first, which is wrong. Uh, the most important thing before, even before you consider uh, selling in Europe, is the actual product compliance. Because in Europe, there is multiple countries, they have different product compliance guidelines, and usually, and sometimes the product compliance check might even take longer than that, up to like six months, depending on what you're selling. So whenever somebody comes to me, I tell them, hey, Klaus, you want to expand in Europe? Here is your checklist. First, you need to have the product compliance check. I'm going to connect you with uh, one of my partners because we have companies who provide product compliance for health and wellness. We have some par partners provide for food and some other stuff. So we have partners for everything, you know. That's actually one of my business like Extreme Power Brands. We have a network of 1,500 founders who help sellers for anything and everything everywhere. But since we're going to chat about Europe, we have those for the product compliance. So once the product compliance check is done, which is the label, certifications, whatever you would need, then you have the green light to go ahead and take care of your taxes. And the taxes in Europe are called VAT. That's the only thing that you should worry about. You don't need to set up a company in Europe, to, to be honest. A lot of people think that you need to set up a company here. That's not true. And as a matter of fact, US companies have a priority when they expand in Europe. I'm going to uh, give you more details for that, but let's just go through the checklist. So the second thing is taxes. VAT compliance or the so the abbreviation, which is value added tax. So each of the countries where you're planning to sell in Europe, and if you're planning to hold stock, they would require you to have a VAT number. If you hold stock only in one single country in Europe, you would need one VAT. So I'm going to talk about the easiest expansion way in Europe. So the easiest expansion way to Europe is the following. You select a country. We usually uh, recommend the home country of Klaus, Germany, for a few, few different reasons, by the way. Uh, first, uh, the German market is the biggest one in Europe. Amazon, which is the biggest marketplace, is actually the biggest, the second biggest one in Germany. But besides that, that's the biggest economy in Europe. Also, for all the English-speaking listeners, which I think are most of you guys, 
in, in Germany, they don't require documents translation. So you can provide your documents in English and they're gonna just do it like that. They wouldn't require to translate those in, in German. The, uh, another reason why we recommend Germany. In Germany, uh, non-EU companies don't uh, need to have don't need fiscal representative insurance. The fiscal representative insurance is a insurance which some countries in Europe require when you have VAT registration uh, in case you decide to skip and not pay the VAT. So this is the insurance which is going to cover the liability. So Germany, they don't require that. So they're not going to ask you to pay extra. And another reason why Germany would be the go-to market is because they're located in the center of Europe. So if you guys are in the States, Imagine Texas, Austin, center location. You make deliveries across the whole European Union from your location there using using like free pay or whatever you want. And to be honest, I'm based in Bulgaria. I order from Amazon and other like marketplace, and it, I have my stuff delivered from Germany in two to three days. So, so and this is the only thing you would need because if you go to an advisor or like Shopify or Amazon, a lot of times they're gonna tell, okay, you would need to set up. The so-called FBA model on Amazon. I'm not sure how it's called in Shopify, but like multi warehouse uh, uh, like distribution. This would require you to do multiple VATs. So don't listen to those guys. You don't need multiple VATs. You just need one warehouse. You start selling from Germany. If you want a cheaper option than Germany, you can go to Czech Republic and Slovakia because they're na neighboring countries and also don't uh, require fiscal representation. So you can set up a warehouse there. And you can start selling across the European Union. So we're just going from VAT to the next step, which is logistics. You would need to set up a warehouse where you're going to sell your stock. So customs, we have partners who can help with that. And the logistics, which is the next step. For anybody who is D2C, you would need to have a reliable partner who is going to deliver your products across, across, across Europe. Ideally, you should select a company which has multiple free pills across Europe. Because at the beginning... I recommend because I'm cheap guy in a positive way. I've done this stuff. I've made mistakes. So I always start small and expand. So start with Germany, Slovakia, or Czech Republic. Use a free pill. Ideally, no, we can recommend several ones which work with. If not, ask a friend who is going to recommend somebody who is reliable. Set up your order there. Start selling across the European Union. Once you see that you have huge demand and you have a lot of sales, let's say in France, in UK, in Italy, then it would make sense to set up a second warehouse in the country where you have the most sales. When you do that, you would be required to do a VAT registration. But you, like I said, this is the smart way. Follow the demand. If nobody is buying your product in, let's say, in Romania or Bulgaria, there is no need to uh, do any VAT compliance there. And somebody would say, mm -hmm. if people are going to say, okay, Nick, but what happened with the VAT threshold? This was a thing that whenever you hit the threshold, you're required to do VAT registration regarding, regardless of that, if you host, hold your stock or not in this country. So this is the good news, guys. In 2021, the VAT regime was changed and uh, something new was actually announced, which is called One Stop Shop or the so-called OSS. Whenever you know you're selling in Europe and you have a single storage location, you can use the OSS to fulfill orders from this location to uh, all the B2C clients across the European Union. And the good thing is the following. Let's say we, we use the case with Germany. You have one VAT in Germany. Then you once you reach 10,000 euro, which is the threshold, you would, you would have the option to re register for VAT. If you don't do that, eventually you would be forced to register for VAT in all the countries where you hit the threshold. So my advice is register for the yeah. OSS. Okay. I think you have a question, Klaus. No, it makes perfect sense. Now, this whole process obviously opens the gates to the whole European Union. Um, so that's like 20 something countries or something like that. And um, I've made the same experience like you. Um, I was in Cyprus and I was ordering from, from Amazon in, in Germany and I got there like in three days or something like that. But deal was made with the German company, with the German seller. And um, so there were no tax implications at all from, from my side. Now, if you're based in the US and you have your VAT registration, obviously at, at some point you need to do your tax filing in the US. Um, what kind of reporting do you need to prove from your sales in Europe 
back into the US. How does that work? Okay, so in, in regards to that, no, this is this is how it works. Now, when you set up the when you say in Europe, what what hell tax does for you, for example, is a uh, health tax does the VAT registration, which takes two to three months. Sometimes it might take a little longer, like in Spain. Spain is notorious for taking longer than the rest of Europe. Once you have the VAT number, uh, health tax is going to file the reports on your behalf. So uh, what you would be required to do is whenever we file the reports, we're going to get the VAT return, which is the amount that you would need to pay to the tax authority. So those are mm -hmm. the returns that you pay usually monthly. And... Besides those stuff, you know, all those documents are actually stored in our dashboard, in our software. So th those are the things that you would need to provide to your local accountant. So my advice here is to hire an e-commerce accountant because accounting and e-commerce accounting are totally different things now because uh, it, it's much different. Now, see what I'm not an expert in, in accounting because accounting and bookkeeping and expansions are two different things because for to sell in Europe, you need to be VAT compliant because your accounting is done wherever your company is registered. But this doesn't have to do anything with the VAT. VAT is where you're selling your products, not where you have your company registered. So to be honest, Klaus, I have a, I have some great experts which can cover the e-commerce accounting topic, but in simple terms, no, uh, this is the, the list that you should worry about. Uh, VAT compliance is the one thing that uh, is most important when you expand in Europe. Mm -hmm. You said the the process can vary. Um, obviously, you have to the, the product um, the product compliance is the first step, and you said that yeah, might take even, yeah. even product, longer. How, how long can that take? Uh, I I've heard that up to six months. Sometimes it takes quicker, but six times is the like the worst case scenario, depending on what you're trying to sell in Europe. So that's why you do the product compliance check first, and then you once this is cleared or you know the time when when you're gonna get that, then you can apply for the VAT. And in the meantime, mm -hmm. of course, you can arrange the import of stock if your supplier is not in the EU. And probably the last thing that people must do, and a lot of them are not doing, are actually the localization and translation. Mm -hmm. uh, because now, let's say you're you're based in the States now. Uh, I, I finished high school in the States. I went to the university. There, so British English and American English are totally different. Unless you optimize your website for British English, people are not going to connect with what we're selling. No? Like practice and training. You know, I think and it's practice in the States, it's training in Europe or vice versa. Oh, I forgot that. So there is a lot of words. Like you're not going to, if you're trying to sell soccer balls on Amazon Co. UK, you're not going to sell anything you know? <laughs> or soccer jerseys. So you, you need to walk away that. It, we have partners who specialize with that. They don't use software. This is something that AI still cannot do yet you need to speak the local language i mean close i i don't i don't speak german but of course there's big difference between like i guess it's german austrian swiss right there is specific words that can differentiate so if you guys are not because keep in mind e-commerce is competitive you know if you do the, all the steps correctly you're gonna do very well but if you think that you're just gonna fly Without doing anything, it's not going to happen. And we see that a lot with big brands. Now, brands doing millions, they think that they just turn on and start selling. That, that, that's not how it works. I mean, you need to go through the steps. Ideally, you should do, this, you should do it the smart way like I explained. Now, start small because I've seen the, the opposite. Companies go to Amazon or to some advisor, they set them up with seven VATs. Two of those VATs are ready. Three of, of those are not ready. So they got frustrated. So start small. Even though it's a big market, you need to consider each country as a separate market. Of course, uh, before we do all the unsexy stuff with taxing components, you should do your product research. There is a lot of tools out there which you can use to see where is the opportunity. Uh, because sometimes there might be a huge opportunity, sometimes there might not be. The good thing about Europe is that even though it's a big market, which is around 750 million. This is how much is the population. 450 of those are over 18. Europe has the uh, like the highest average order value uh, in the world, which means that if Chinese sellers, which are a big mess for a lot of sellers, uh, they cannot compete with you because they're usually are very strong in the low cost products. If you have a mm -hmm. good quality product selling for a high order value of over 50, you're going to do very well in Europe because Europe values quality. They're customer centric. 
of course, we're kind of worried because we fight, we argue for all kind of stuff. But besides that, it's a huge market. And one stats which I know from the Amazon space, I know that uh, most of your listeners are from Shopify, but the situation is not different. Only two percent of Amazon sellers are selling on uh, on Amazon Europe on all the marketplace. So ninety eight percent of the US sellers are not even selling in Europe. So imagine how many of your competitors are not even considering that. And I've spoken with a lot of brands in the USA. Okay, we don't want to go there. VT, have you guys done any like product research? Anything? No, we don't care. We haven't. We haven't seen. We haven't reached the peak in the states. Okay, but uh, what about profitability? This is another thing that people don't know. Even though it's a smaller market, you're gonna make less revenue. The profitability is very, very high. Uh, mm -hmm. Recently, I spoke with a partner who was giving talking about Walmart. Everybody knows about Walmart in the States. So Walmart is much smaller than Amazon. They grow very quickly, but the profit margin there is 10% higher than on Amazon. So you can actually assume that for Europe. And, and there are advantages that if you do it, if you decide to expand to Europe, most of your competitors are not going to do that. So you'll be the first. Well, very good point there. I think you should then really consider to go for the low-hanging fruit, open the European market instead of squeezing the last bit out of a uh, very competitive US market. And I think you mentioned a couple of things there that I want to touch on is obviously you need to localize your product detail pages or your store for the market. It might be British English or you might go for other languages as well because just coming what you have and putting it over in a different culture, a different country, as I said, will probably not work and you might not see the sales that you want to see. Um, one thing that you said, and I was in the situation a few years ago, so my own company is registered in Singapore. I was selling in the US, um, but being in Singapore and me myself traveling all over the planet it was very very difficult to find an expert um, to really answer my questions that I had in back in the time when it came to company taxes everything that came with um, I found someone eventually but it was not an easy task um, to get there and I think if you want to go into Europe it might be like a, a huge wall that you're standing in front because of tax rules policies everything that comes with this, the administration but dealing and working with experts that basically know what they do and it's their day-to-day -day business um, definitely helps and makes it much, much easier. So I think as, as an entrepreneur, you don't have to deal personally with all these issues. You just delegate the task yeah, to someone. Exactly, exactly. Knows. Even I've even called, uh, and because we have this expansion to your program, and what I call my partners who help there were actually the expa EU expansion squad. Because we have people who cover all topics. And to be honest, it's good that you mentioned this option because there is actually multiple ways how you can expand to Europe. So what we discuss here is a way is the expansion where you do it yourself. You, you simply use partners in Europe who can help you with the expansion, like compliance, taxes, logistics, translation, etc. There is actually two other models that you can use, uh, which I have partners who do that. There is an option where a company in Europe, I have two of those partners who do everything for you. Instead of setting up your own VAT or compliance and everything, there's there's something like a distributor. They call themselves also accelerators. So those guys, they have their own VATs, they have their own companies, they do taxes, product compliance, localization, translation, market research. They do everything in-house. The only thing that they actually let you do is obviously do it, your PPC and everything else. So they do all the nasty stuff about the compliance and they call it like go to strategy or like uh, mm -hmm. expansion agencies so those guys they do everything they set you up on all the channels you want like like you name it you know like all the big marketplace in europe like amazon you know like zawando kaufland c discount whatever you want some of them actually help out with the retail so for example mm -hmm. if you would like to go e-commerce and retail they can help with that and there is actually a last type of expansion that you can do in Europe. They're, they're, those are the so-called uh, distribution companies, which buy your products in wholesale and they just resell them in Europe. And probably there is a third type, which I've, I've seen a few times, are actually companies which are very strong in a certain niche. There, there is demand for, for what they're selling, let's say, in the States. They find a, a similar company which is based in Europe 
which doesn't have any plans to go to the UC and they use their distribution channel and connections to actually start selling from them. So let's say recently I spoke with the supplement brand. They're very established in the States. They have huge demand. They don't do anything in Europe. So they're working for a partner, another supplement company, which can help them out to do that. How they're going to do it? No, there is different models. They can either sell their products. They can, they can sign exclusivity. But uh, just to summarize, no, there is always an option. The only way that you're not going to expand is if you don't want to do that. I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So give me an idea with what's the onboarding process um, at Halotex? Um, what kind of steps, what kind of homework do I need to do before I, I approach you and so on? I mean, the, you actually don't need to do any homework. I mean, the one thing that you can do before, of course, you come to us, you should do a product research. This is the most important thing. You need to see uh, if which if there is a product market fit, which market, because that's the most important. Now, if people are not going to buy your stuff, regardless of what you do, you're just going to waste money. But the good thing about Europe is that it's still early, you know. It's still growing uh, better than the USA, you know. It's still early. So the first thing you need to do is do a, like a market research. If you don't know how to do that, we have partners who can help out with that, both on the D2C, Amazon, retail, Omni channel. So the good thing about me is that I'm like a, like a preach, you know, like athletic preach. You no, know? you come to me, you tell me what issues you see have, and I am gonna find you a partner who can help out. Because the idea is not to take your money, because I'm an ex-e-commerce seller. I, I've been a client of Hilltax, by the way. Uh, I, I ended up with them by accident. I sold my business, and the founders invited me to actually advise them about partnerships. So I've been on the other side, I know what issues and what problems we can face. So that's why whenever I talk with an owner, I'm very straightforward. I'm not going to tell them you're going to do this and we're going to do that. I'm telling, okay, this is what you need to do. If you do those steps well, you're going to actually do very well. I'm no, nobody's going to guarantee that you're going to succeed or not. But there are certain steps that you can take and there's companies and people who can help out. So, so just to answer your question about the steps. So the first thing is... Hey, if you can do a product research, great. If not, you come to us, you tell us what we're se selling, what kind of products, et cetera. So based on what type of product you're selling, I'm going to connect you with somebody who's going to do the product component check. Then let's assume this is done. The next thing is to uh, apply for VAT. We always advise to go for one country. A lot of times people go for UK and Germany because UK is outside, outside of here right now after Brexit. So they would like to keep those as coming from an English speaking market. Mm -hmm. So UK, Germany, UK is going to fulfill orders to the UK, Germany for the rest of the EU. You register for the VAT. You wait two to three months, like I said, to get the VAT number. When the VAT number is ready, then you can start selling. So in the meantime, uh, while you're selling for your for your VAT number, you would need to arrange the import of your stocks to Europe. So we connect with partners who can help with that. And probably a few weeks before, uh, actually, you never know exactly when you're going to get the VAT, but assuming that is the free, free, three months period, let's say one month before you do, you get that, you should start preparing your website, vocalization, everything, and all your copy and the next steps for that. And that should be the action point. So ideally, Whenever you would like to expand, you should apply for the VAT probably beginning of January, beginning of the year. I know that because I work with like Shopify, we work with Shopify, Amazon, other big marketplace. So those companies, they have the so-called expansion teams. So they actually recruit sellers and they help them expand. So uh, what I know from them is that Q1 is where they recruit sellers or e-common brands. Mm -hmm. So you can actually start uh, expanding, get your VAT compliance, whatever. So Q1 is it's for the compliance stuff, compliance, taxes, whatever. Q2 is where you actually start selling. Q3 is actually when you optimize, you know, your brand for, for those marketing. Q4 is where you should do the killing and make all those money. So ideally, you know, that's the, an ideal scenario. So Q1, you get started. Q3, you should be ready to actually start selling, optimizing, you no know, testing. Q3, of course, is where you should actually start accelerating and Q4 should be your A plus game, you know. But I'm talking about ideal scenarios, of course, but because some people have issues with this and that, and usually it's because you don't know uh, how you can do that.
Mm -hmm. I think we were timing with the timing quite right because this episode will be in January. So if you listen to this episode, next step for you is follows Nick's framework and basically the roadmap that he just laid out for you on how to get registered in Europe and start selling there when it really makes sense and then being in Q4 and bringing in the big bucks. Nick, where can people find out more about you and your services? Uh, actually, the website is hellotax.com, which is H -E -L -L -O -T -A -X com, Or you can actually connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to help. If we cannot help out, I'm going to recommend somebody. You know, we can, I, I have people who can help out with everything anywhere. So um, don't be afraid to ask. We have a saying in Bulgaria. You can go to Constantinople by asking questions. So don't don't be afraid to ask. I'm, we're not like the wars. I'm not going to charge you by a minute. So <laughs> Yeah. No, I can, I can vouch for that. Nick is very well connected. So for any questions you have, feel free to reach out to him. Um, he definitely will help you there. Nick, thanks so much. I will put the links in the show notes. Um, so then you're just one click away. And I hope a lot of people reach out to you and try to open their business into Europe. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, everybody. Seeing you in Europe. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision. But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community. And remember, your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.